What if you came across a beautiful daily driver from the 1950s? Or a vintage Dodge van that you could cruise across the country in? Or maybe even a vintage pickup from the 1970s that serves both as a daily driver and a classic work truck? Then I have found for you 10 such vehicles in today's video, and I believe all of these are affordable. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Hello American Rod Shop family. My name is Solon and welcome back into another episode of American Rod Shop. And in this video, I have found for you guys and gals out there, 10 very nice classic daily driver cars and classic work trucks that are, in my opinion, very affordable. They're running and driving and are great fun to own. Before we get into showcasing these 10 cars, I would like to invite you to stick around for the after show that will come up in this video right after we showcase car number 10. That's always a lot of great fun and we'll find out who won the Matchbox Thunderbird we gave away in the last video. Plus we'll be giving away another item as well for the next upcoming drawing in the next upcoming video. And we've got some automotive trivia to see how well you know your automotive history. I do hope you decide to stick in there and enjoy that. But right now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video with car number one. 1969 Pontiac Firebird Coupe, listed in Killeen, Texas, marked down from 12500 to 11400 Up for sale is a daily driver project car that is a black 1969 Firebird waiting for someone to take it to the next level. It has 60,000 original miles on the body and is powered by a 350 Chevy engine hooked up to an automatic transmission. Mechanically, it is very sound and it runs and drives great. It has a very solid body with very little rust and will need only any small ding going over and then give it a new paint job to make it really stand out and shine. Although the original interior displays decent with average wear and is of driver quality, it will still need restoration. It does have disc brakes and classic five-spoke smoked rims with newer tires to make for better handling conditions and displays well enough to make anyone come over and check it out at a cruise in. The seller is asking for what he considers a very reasonable price at $11,400 or best offer for a very sought-after collectible car. Looking for serious buyers only, and this one comes with a clean title. So guys and gals, there's number one up for you. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Now, if you see a car or truck in this video that you would like to check out, all you have to do is go over to this video's description, click on the word more, and when the description expands downward, scroll down till you find the car that you're looking for. Click on the link underneath that, and it'll take you straight to the ad where the car is at for sale. Now, if the ad does not appear, that means that probably by now the car may have sold. Some of these are really great prices and they don't last very long. Number two, 1973 Chevrolet C10 pickup truck listed in Austell, Georgia for $8,500. Up for sale is this red 1973 Chevy C10 stepside pickup, which runs and drives very well. It is powered by a 350 Chevy engine coupled to an automatic transmission. The body is very solid with no rust. Several years ago, it did receive a repaint from a gray color to a beautiful red color and the paint and body display very nicely. It rides on polished 12-hole aluminum mags with newer Cooper Radial GT tires. Not too long ago, the bed received a new wood floor that is solid and durable and it also received new black seat cover that is in great shape and very comfortable. This truck makes a great daily driver or a classic work truck and will not stay around long at this asking price of $8,500 or best offer. And this truck 
comes with a clean title. So guys, these 1973 Chevrolet C10 models in my condition were beautiful trucks, especially the step sides like this one. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Number three, 1967 Triumph Herald 1200 Sport Convertible, listed in Hendersonville, North Carolina for $11,000. Up for sale is this rare Triumph Herald 1200 Sport Convertible that has an original 50,000 miles on it and it runs and drives great. We'll not see hardly any of these cars due to their rarity, but this one absolutely has no rust and just two years ago it was stripped down to the bare metal given a full respray of a beautiful coat of gloss green paint and the off-white interior was completely reupholstered and has been almost unused since then. The dash on this car is okay, but the seller does have a new one with some new Smith gauges to go with it. It is powered by the original 1.3 liter four-cylinder engine coupled to a manual transmission and will get you fantastic gas mileage as a daily driver. If you'd like to own a rare and economical car that would definitely be fun to drive and get you plenty of questions asked about this unique car, then this is the one for you. The seller is asking $11,000 or best offer, and it comes with a clean title. Okay, we want to pause from the count for just a moment to check out the tri fi Chevy pick of the week, and let me know if you've ever seen one of these. 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air Stretch Limo, listed in Bloomer, Wisconsin, for $15,000. For sale is this blue 1957 Chevy Bel Air limousine. It has 103,727 miles on the body and is powered by a 350 Oldsmobile front wheel drive motor with automatic transmission and it runs and drives great. The limo was built in the late 1990s for use around the Las Vegas, Nevada area and it has the factory dash with a tilt steering wheel. A lot of money and time was originally sunk into this ride. Now it just needs a good home and someone to give it a little TLC. New tires have been added to it recently and it needs some minor body work and a few rest spots here and there, but otherwise solid and straight. The interior looks good and is comfortable for all guests. The seller is asking $15,000 or best offer and it comes with a clean title. All paperwork on this build comes with it as well. A very cool ride and one that will definitely draw a crowd no matter where you take it. So guys, have you ever seen a 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air Stretch Limo? This is a first for me. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments. Number 4. 1955 Oldsmobile 88 two-door sedan. Listed in Arvada, Colorado for $14,000. For sale is a beautiful two-toned black and blue 1955 Oldsmobile 88 two-door sedan. It is powered by a 350 Chevy small block with just 10,000 miles on it, and that is coupled to a TH400 transmission with a floor shifter, and everything runs and drives great. Lots of upgrades and repairs have been already done on this car, which includes the following. Brand new battery positioned in the trunk, new electric radiator fan, Brakes converted to disc on the front, new brake shoes on the rear drums, new shocks, new wiring, and wiring harness installed. And many more items, too many to list here. Everything electrical works good except for the gas gauge, which probably needs a new sending unit. The dipstick gasket needs replaced and it comes with a new dash clock, the original radio, a drag link repair kit, and a few other small parts. Matching blue interior looks nice, but still needs a seat cover for the rear seat. Seller's asking $14,000 or best offer, and will consider trades of interest. So guys, for me personally, this car is my favorite pick in all of the video tonight. And you can let me know at the end of this video what was your favorite pick of the video. That always helps me out on research and trying to find more cars that you guys and guys out there tend to enjoy. But for me, this one's my favorite. Number 5, 1972 Dodge Ram Van, 
B-150 model listed for 8300 in San Jose, California. For sale is this rare orange 1972 Dodge B-100 Tradesman short wheelbase van. This van runs and drives great and the seller has taken it all over the country with no issues and has an original 55,000 miles on it. The seller is the third owner and has had it ever since it just had 12,000 miles on it. It is powered by the original slant six-cylinder motor with three on the tree manual transmission. Custom upgrades include an Offenhauser manifold, a two-barrel Holly Street Avenger carburetor, Patriot side pipes, Clifford headers, fresh plugs, new wires, new coil, new fuel pump, new rotors and brake booster, new master cylinder, fresh oil, and a new battery. Front disc brakes with a newer suspension was added as well. A custom front black interior was added a few years ago, which still looks nice, but does have some wear on the driver's seat. This has been a fun machine, and the owner has enjoyed driving it on a daily basis, and now wants to pass that joy to a new owner. He's asking a very low $8,300 best offer, and probably this won't last long at that price, in my opinion. Number 6. 1939 Buick Special 4S model. Listed in Hobart, Indiana for $8,000. For sale is this black 1939 Buick Special 4S model 4-door straight 8 sedan that runs and drives good. This 39 Buick was given a restoration many years ago, but still displays decent. It's a great classic car daily driver, and it is powered by the original 248 cubic inch 8 straight engine coupled up to a 3-speed manual transmission that produces 107 horsepower. The paint is decent and probably needs buffing out, but otherwise still displays well. All the glass is solid with no cracks, but does have some fogging on some of the edges of the window panes. All of the body chrome is in place and displays well, but the bumpers do need to be re-chromed. The restored interior looks very nice and is very comfortable. It would not take much to finish out this 39 Buick. Sellers asking $8,000 or best offer, and it comes with a clean title. Okay, let's pause right here and check out my It Came From The Internet segment, where each week I try to find the most rarest, the most wildest, the most customized, the most vintage, and sometimes the most strangest vehicle for sale on all of the internet. And this week is no exception. Super rare 1984 Grumman Crew Cab listed in Macomb, Michigan for $29,900. Up for sale is an extremely rare 1984 Grumman Olson Crew Cab. If you want to take a one-of-a-kind vehicle to a car show that no one else has, then this is it. No expense was spared to repurpose this into a heavy-duty pickup that makes a great fifth-wheel hauler or haul your motorbikes on. Upgrades include a strong-running new 350 motor, new chrome steering column, a new steering wheel, New custom exhaust by Doug's mufflers and pinstriping. Only 500 of these were ever made. This one has it all. All beautiful inferno orange paint color, new halo orange headlights, and new LED lighting throughout. All new stunning ultra wheels with Wrangler tires on this dually truck really sets off the exterior. Custom dash with everything new, new tinted glass windshield, new seats, and an odometer that reads 58,000 miles on the body. If you're looking for a one-of-a-kind vehicle or to use as an advertisement for your business or to haul your Harley around on, then this is it. Seller's asking $29,000 or best offer, and it comes with a clean title. Let's get back to the count with number 7. 1930 Ford Model A, marked down from $15,000 to $10,500, and listed in New Berlin, Wisconsin. Up for sale is this very clean brown 1930 Ford Model A Coupe with a factory rumble seat that was restored in the mid-1990s. This car has only 500 miles on it since the restoration and has been garage-kept and well-maintained ever since. 
It was also given a tan colored cloth and wool interior to match as close to the original as possible. The rumble seat was recovered with vinyl and the car also comes with a car cover. It has the original steel spoke wheels with fairly new tires mounted on them. It is in good running and driving condition and is worthy to show or to take out on a drive when desired. It is powered by the original four-cylinder engine and is mechanically sound, but the original mileage on the motor is unknown by the seller. This is a great car to use in a parade or to take on a local cruise-in or an antique car show and will always get you plenty of attention. The seller is asking $10,500 or best offer, and it has a clean title. Always love these your model coupes. Let me know what you think about this 1930 Ford Model A coupe in the comments. Hey, and listen up. If you don't find your dream car or truck in this video, then I suggest you check out the other four videos that I dropped in the last week or so. There are still a lot of great cars in those videos for sale. And who knows, you just might find your dream car in one of those videos. Also, if you haven't done so yet, please like, subscribe, and share. It won't cost you a dime but it'll help this little channel to grow. And if you will, at the end of this video, let me know in the comments what was your favorite car in all of the whole video. If you do that, I appreciate it. I thank you for the feedback. Number eight, 1950 Dodge truck, marked down from 12,950 to 11,950, and listed in Bowling Green, Kentucky. For sale is this yellow 1950 Dodge pickup truck that has an original 84,623 miles on it. It has had an older, mild customization from just a few years back. During that time, it was given a bright yellow paint job along with the matching custom yellow and black interior. Recently, it was given some new carpet and some custom-built aluminum side step boards, but this truck could still use some minor TLC to get it back to its full glory. It is powered by the original straight six cylinder engine coupled up to a manual transmission with three on the tree shifter. This is a very dependable, good running and easy driving pickup truck that will make someone a great daily driver or a classic work truck. The paint is starting to flake off in some areas from use and age, but it could use a good detail and buffing out but still otherwise, it's a very cool old classic truck. The seller's asking $11,950 or best offer and will consider trades of anything that is of interest. And it comes with a clean title. So guys, let me know what you think about these old Dodge trucks. I love these 1950 models, even all the way up to 1958 is my favorite. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Number nine. 1967 Chevrolet Corvair Monza convertible listed in Littleton, Colorado for $13,000. For sale is a fun to drive 1967 Corvair Monza convertible that is powered by a 164 cubic inch flat six engine mated to a four speed manual transaxle and is very dependable. It will get you where you need to go and has only 73,000 original miles on it. Recently, it was given a mild restoration, which includes a new gold paint job, a new white vinyl retractable top, and a matching gold vinyl upholstery. 13-inch wheels with wire covers rounds out the exterior package and gives it a nice custom look. This year model features four-wheel independent suspension, a working Delco AM radio, and all the manufacturer's literature and service records to go with it. The seller has owned this car since 1988, and in preparation for the sale, the carburetor was rebuilt and the oil was changed. This car is absolutely a fun vehicle to drive, especially during the summertime, and will get you plenty of looks while driving. Seller is asking $13,000 or best offer, and it comes with a clean title. Okay, we've made it to number 10, and I appreciate each and every one of you sticking in here with me till now. And don't forget, after we showcase number 10, we're going to transition right into the after show. And I invite each and every one of you to stay tuned for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. But right now, let's check out number 10. 1969 Chevrolet El Camino, listed in Naples, Florida for $14,000.
for sale by the original owner is a very clean gloss red 1969 Chevrolet El Camino. This car has had a very solid and super straight body all of its life, but does have some bubble rust starting to show up in some areas underneath the paint and would need some minor body work there. It did receive a new paint job during the customization just a few years back, but now the clear coat is starting to peel off in some areas and you would probably need a new paint job if you wanted to show it. Right now, the paint still displays well and is of daily driver quality. It is powered by a 350 Chevy motor and a four-speed manual transmission with the shifter in the floor, and it sounds smooth and it runs and drives great. The motor probably has around 10,000 miles on it since being installed. The body does have an SS front end, and it sports a very nice custom dark gray interior that is absolutely beautiful and comfortable. The bed does need some paint and bodywork from use over the years. This is a nice daily driver that will get you to wherever you want to go and will get you noticed in the process. The seller is asking an affordable $14,000 of best offer and it comes with a clean title. Well, I am so glad you decided to stick around for the after show. We got some trivia coming up and we've got to find out who won that Matchbox car that we gave away in the last video. Plus, we got another great prize we're going to give away tonight as well. First of all, let's get into some trivia. Find out if you know the answers to this question. Now, this will be question number one of three questions tonight. And this question is, in what year did the first LED headlights appear on cars? Was it 2002? Was it 2004? Or was it 2006? If you know that answer, drop it in the comments right now. And for fun, we'll check everybody at the end of the video and find out who got what answers correctly. Okay, let's pause now and find out who won that good looking Matchbox Thunderbird that we gave away in the last video. That was donated by viewer Richard Collins. So what we're going to do is go over to raffledash.com. I'll put in the URL code for the video. Then I'm going to press pick a comment. And the winner is Gene Shelton. Congratulations, Gene Shelton. You have won that matchbox. Now all you got to do is in the next seven days, contact me at AmericanRodShop at Yahoo.com. And I'll give you details on how to collect your totally free prize will not cost you a penny. And congratulations, Gene, on winning that. And appreciate Richard Collins donating that for giveaway. Trivia question number two. Which one of these car companies is considered by many auto enthusiasts to have built the very first coupe? Was it Ford? Was it Chevy? Or was it Cadillac? If you know that answer, drop it in the comments. We'll check everybody's answer at the very end of this video. Okay, here's the item we're showcasing to be given away in the next upcoming video where we'll draw for it then. It's also donated by Richard Collins, and it's a Ford Bronco 2 Matchbox car. You know the drill. All you got to do is these four things. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button for this video. Drop MB for Matchbox in the comments and enter as often as you'd like. If you do those four things, you'll be entered in for a chance to win, and we'll draw for it in the next upcoming regular video. Trivia question number three. True or false? In 1957, the United States Air Force agreed to fund the development of a flying car for weapons use. Now, if you know if that's true or if you think that's false, drop your answer in the comments, and we'll check them all at the end of this video coming up very soon. Now, if you're looking for a great gift item for someone who enjoys watching this channel or you just want to try and support this channel, I invite you to check out American Rod Shop store. I'll put the link over in the description and in the store there you can find t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, mouse pads, posters, and many, many more items. And the sale from all these items goes back into supporting this channel and is deeply appreciated very much. All right, let's check and see how many of these trivia questions you got the answers correct on. Let's look at number one. 2004 was the first year that LED headlights 
were used in automobile, and that was on the Audi A8. Now, by 2006, they had become standard on most luxury cars. The answer to question number two on who is considered to have built the first coupe in American cars was Cadillac, and that was this 1916 T53 model that is considered to be the first coupe built by any American car company by most car enthusiasts. The answer to question number three is true. In 1957, the U.S. Air Force did fund the building of a flying car called the Avro car. The first flying car designed for military use was the Avro car, developed by John Frost, a product design engineer for Avro Canada in the 1950s. The flying saucer-like vehicle was supposed to be a supersonic fighter-bomber aircraft capable of vertical takeoff and landing. In 1957, the United States Air Force agreed to fund further development, but the Avro car never functioned as intended. Conspiracy theorist has promoted the idea that the Avro car was initially developed using alien technology from a crashed flying saucer at Roswell, New Mexico in 1948. Thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and share button. I love you all. I'll see you guys and gals in the next upcoming video.